2013 movies. Uh, first of all, let me ask you guys off the top of your head, what is the one movie you are most looking forward to in this new year? Mm. Oh, I, I got one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll just go um, flat out and say Pacific Rim. Ali Del Toro. Yeah, I'll go with that. Is that what, I mean, what, there are other movies like I want to see. But is that, that like just, robots versus monsters? Is that yeah, the, I mean it's like it just, but it's him and he. What was the last movie he directed? Um, that he actually directed. I know he produced Mama, but he the, it, the last it, Hellboy two. Yeah, yeah, maybe or uh, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard for me to say because I get confused with his producing and directing. Yeah, but, he did, uh, they did the remake of also "Don't Be Afraid of the Dark," um, but he only produced that with the guy um, with Nick Nunzetta from um, Chud. dot com. But and he produced Mama, which is actually not a is actually a pretty good film to, if you want to know the, the God's honest truth. But Pacific Rim is the one that really of all the big, big, big movies. You know the big event movies is the one that really um, is at the top, um, just because it's it's Del Toro and it's just he's got such a vivid imagination. Um, and this was interesting how it came about too, because he'd been struggling for a long time to get that in the mountains of badness mm-hmm. or whatever uh, made, and uh, and he just could not get it done. No, it's it never I happened mean, for years. For years he tried to get it done, and then Pacific Rim comes in. And it seemed like it happened pretty darn quickly. Yeah. Before. Yeah, this massive yeah. movie. So yeah. And, and it does look like a it does look like just a, a, a masterful monster movie. I mean that's that's what I that's what I'm so excited about. It really seems to get the size and the scope and the and the scale of everything correctly. And yeah. uh, and I, I I'm really excited about that film too. Yeah, hopefully it won't be like Battleship. Right? No, I don't think it'll be like that. Um, <laughs> now there, I think there's a film that all three of us are, are eager to see in the next couple of weeks. Um, side effects. I uh, think we're all very eager to see. That's the next film I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, um, yeah, no question. I mean, with Soderbergh and Rudy Mara, and mm-hmm, then yeah. and then you know a tremendous tremendous supporting cast, including Anne Dowd and so many others. I mean, right? Oh yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, so so, I mean, is, so is this the last theatrical movie that he's going to direct? Oh, I don't think so. I think that's a. Uh, I think I. <laughs> I don't see him giving up directing anytime soon. Uh, but you know, but because he I said this was his last year. Could he be convinced? Could he be convinced to come back to make um, Elmore Leonard's Road Dogs? Which features some of the characters from Out of Sight and other Elmore Leonard novels, but could he be convinced just to? Come? I is I, I can't I don't see Soderbergh is a restless type. Um, I mean, obviously, he, he's one of he is in in many ways. You know, um, he's up there with as far as American directors go. He he's one of the most prolific directors we have right now. Um, you know, I don't think I've ever seen anyone as curious and. Excited about the medium as as he is, to be very honest with you. Um, I mean, you could say you know he's only only other directors I can think of that that put out such an output would be um, Fassbender and uh, Takashi Miki in Japan, who's still living and making. Tons well, and, and Woody Allen that makes. Yeah. Well, Woody Allen is in a class by himself. We talked about that last night. We need the Woody <laughs> Allen podcast channel. Um, yeah, but I saw his new movie and I, I, I kind of liked it. To Rome with Love. It was, it was okay. That was all right. I mean, yeah. That was all right. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, well, for me, but for me, I, I, he sounds one. like he's very sincere when he says he's retiring, though. And yes. that doesn't mean he'll never come back. But he seems like somebody that doesn't necessarily need it. I mean, he doesn't thrive yeah. on the attention or the no, power play or any of that. No. So right. I, I would I would think that he could, could very well be one of those guys that disappears for a long time. Uh, but, I mean, that, just because side effects might be his last theatrical movie in a long time, but – uh, he still has the Liberace movie on HBO. That exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, for me, for me, my number one uh, movie that I'm looking forward to is Inside Lou and Davis, uh, mm-hmm. the yeah. Coen Brothers movie, because I just saw the trailer online and I was kind of blown away by the trailer. Uh, right. No, no, of course. The, the period detail in it, I love. I love that it takes place during the folk music, uh, the folk music, you know, thing of the sixties and 
and it has original songs in it, which I think is very uh, unusual and great. And I, I, you know, I just, you know, uh, I, I, there's nothing I can really say except when I saw the preview, I was like, oh my God, this looks like it's just totally made for me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm, I'm totally looking forward to that. You know, out of total curiosity, the big, the big, big, huge tidpole movie year that, uh, of the year that I'm most looking forward to would be uh, Bob Lerman's The Great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm just curious to see how it turned out, you know. I mean, I don't know what the hell it's going to be like, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so... Well, that comes out this summer, and that's that's interesting, The Great Gatsby, because... I can see that going either way. I can see that being a tremendous success, or the or one of the biggest bombs of the year, actually, too. Me too. That's a, that's uh, a good point. We we talked about it last night too. I, I think that's you know it could go either way. Um, but you know that's Baz Lorman for you. I mean, he's really a go for broke filmmaker. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. and all and he's had success on both ends of the extreme. You know, Australia wasn't any kind of big barn burner, but. Uh, I mean, his bold visions more often than not have paid off for him. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a curiosity. I think it's it's a shame that he doesn't make more movies. But I can see I liked Australia, although everyone who who I knew was Australian hated that movie. I kind of liked right. it. I thought it was fine. I didn't I didn't think it was embarrassing in any way. No, no, I didn't think so either. Um, I, I mean, I I I like what he was doing. Um, I just wish you I wish you would make more movies. This is the, this is what well, this will be like the first movie in what five years, five or six yeah. years. Yeah, because he's been stuck doing this movie for. for yeah, that I long. mean, <laughs> and, and let's be very honest. Yeah. There's never been a really great, um, never been a really great version of the Great no. Gatsby. So no, this could there's be never a, been this could one work. that was completely successful. And I have true, to say but... something, DiCaprio looks the part, at least from the trailer. Um, mm-hmm. I, if that if that means anything, he does look the part. And it's it's, it's Baz Luhrmann, so of course, of course we'll give it a shot. Um, there's a, you know, the more I'm looking at the release, the, some of the movies that are coming out just within the next, just a couple of weeks actually, there's some, there are some curiosities. Um I, 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 like the, I, I am curious about the Tina Fey Paul Rudd movie Admission. I've been seeing a lot of trailers for that. I saw the trailer for that, you know, and and the, I mean, the movie itself looks like it might be fine, um, but the trailer did not work well at all. Like every joke in the trailer was incredibly lame. Mm-hmm. But but it, it seemed like maybe they're just selling it badly. In the I, I bet that's a good point. I because think... the charm the charm of Tina Fey and Paul Rudd. You know, in a romantic type comedy, I mean mm-hmm. that could work. No, I agree with that because I even before I, I saw the trailer, I had a completely different idea of what the movie was going to be. And then you watch mm-hmm. the trailer, and you're, and I think you, I think we can figure out what the story is. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I like yeah. I like Tina Fey, and I, I just I like Date Night a lot. I thought she and Steve Carell worked very well off each other. So you know, I'm, I'm still not sold on Tina Fey as being a movie star. That's my problem with Tina Fey. There, there's a, there's a lot of truth. I mean, I understand exactly what you're saying, Dean. It's um, you see that what was the other Baby Mama? Yeah. And that should, by all 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 points should have worked. Her and Amy Poehler in a movie together. I mean, oh my God. And it's just sort of half cocked. I mean, you know what though? It takes time though. It depends. I mean, it really does take time because it took forever for George Clooney to be considered a movie star. Um, and, cause he was the he was yeah. the TV guy, and he was had like one failed attempt after another. And finally, when he started doing stuff of integrity, mm-hmm. not stuff that he felt like he had to do to become a movie star, not like Peacemaker, Batman and Robin, not that ilk of movie, but stuff like Syriana. And 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 the and the type of seventies movie out of that he sight, loved. out of sight, really out of sight, out of well, sight was well, the turning point for yeah. him. He well, became I a movie just star. wonder that you know I don't I don't see Tina Fey having those same opportunities or even that same yeah. bent. So it's like well, you stick know, Tina I Fey in a stick Tina Fey in a Lee Daniels film, and uh, <laughs> maybe maybe that'll be another. She'll be the next Precious. There's two other films just like coming out in the next couple of weeks, and if I'm missing, um, there's Dead Man Down. With Colin Farrell, um, which is a thriller um, directed by the director who did the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movies, which looks like it could be interesting. 
And then there's Stoker with Nicole Kidman. Stoker interests yeah. me, yes. Yeah, I mean, Stoker is, I, I would actually say, of the spring, of the early spring, the big, big art house movie. Mm. I think so. And then there's all the movies The Rock's in, G.I. Joe. Well, Retail and you know, what, you, know what Stoker, you know what Stoker is majorly influenced by, and, and actually the director who did the original Old Boy, he actually said this. He said, you know, I was most influenced by De Palma when I made Stoker. It looks that way. Oh my God! I, looked, I thought you were going to see a Spike Lee movie. Um, but <laughs> no, no, no. Well, but Spike Lee's you know, version of Old Boy, Spike Lee's version of Old Boy comes out in October, mm-hmm. and that's Josh Brolin leading that. Mm-hmm. And they say that that's an incredibly intense movie, from what I've heard from early word of mouth. Well, that is very intense. Well, uh, good to see him doing another movie. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, speaking of De Palma, you know, of course we have Passion, which I've already seen, and and that's that's prime De Palma. That is for De Palma fans, and uh, you know, I don't know of a release date yet for that, but I'm hoping that that will be coming out sometime this year. Uh, I think it's this uh, first quarter. I think it's probably uh, uh, March, April, and and as soon as it does, I hope he's not filming the Paterno thing. I hope he leaves time for. Press because uh, he said that he'd come back. I mean, he told you. Yeah. That, so I yeah, watched so. Love Crime uh, last, like in December. What the, that, what the what it's based on? That's uh-huh. actually a pretty good movie. Um, so I would love, I, but it's you're watching it and you're just like thinking, oh yeah, De Palma could do wonders with <laughs> with this. I mean, yeah. And yeah. Uh, from what I understand, there's some big changes. I haven't seen Love Crime, but there's some big changes in it that uh, that. That actually deepened the film, uh, from from what I've heard from the people who've actually seen mm-hmm. those films. Also, another film that I've already seen this year that absolutely needs to be on everybody's list, which will come out sometime in the spring, is called Francis Ha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I can't wait from to see it. Noah Baumbach, the starring Greta Gerwig, uh, co-written by the both of them, and that's just that's just brilliant and really great fun. And I totally expect her to be in the Oscar. Running next year, you know. If it's you need to see the new Woody Allen movie, dude, because Greta Gerwig's in it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the, well, I, that's her role with love. I, yeah, I've I've seen it. I've seen it, and she's and oh, you she's, did. She's, she's always good. And, and I actually had a thought movie. watching her in that movie. I thought that she, I thought that she and Ellen Page should have switched parts. Actually, <clears throat> when I was watching that movie. I, I feel I feel the same way about that too. I feel the same way because I could totally believe her in the other part more than Ellen Page. Yeah. Uh, let me let me let me bring up some uh, like uh, I want to like go away from like the big huge movies and then talk about like the movies that are being put out by like the the, the great directors. You know, okay. so yeah. of course we've got we've got Choose the Wonder. You know, the new Harris Malick film. And then and that's March, right? Got a, yeah, and then we've got possibly got Knight of Cups as well from him. So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I that won't expect happen. that. Yeah, there's, I, there's I, no I, way I, we're I, getting I, two Terrence Malick movies in one year. <laughs> no way, no way. So, so but To the Wonder is definitely on on the list for me. Also, Before Midnight, which is getting great reviews uh, out of Sundance. Do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the new Richard Linkletter uh collaboration with um Ethan Hawke and Yeah, that mm-hmm. Um and it's actually getting the best reviews out of the three movies. It seems to me that everybody is is talking about how it's it's the the capper to the whole thing. Yes, it's like um, the American reunion out of the three, I think. It's, uh, right. I, right. I, exactly. I'm very excited to see that because I saw both of those films. I mean, this could be one of the really one of the great romantic series. Um, well, look, after there. after Burning Man, I'm like I was never a fan of Linkletter before. I mean, I, I, the, his movies never really spoke that very much to me. But after Bernie, I'm 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 racing out to see any Linkletter movie. Well, um, I mean, are you going to go back and are you going to go back and reassess his career? Because I think that you've missed something. Well, I've, there I've, because... I've seen most of, I've seen most of his movies, but actually, I haven't seen any of the any of the before uh, movies. So, uh, I before I see Before Midnight, I'll go back and watch Sunrise and Sunset. So. And they're very, very, very good movies. I have, I have Before Sunrise on a VHS. If you want to borrow it. 
<laughs> okay, I'll, I'll drive over there tonight. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure I can't get it here anywhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive up to Maryland, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so let me bring up some others. There's Edgar Wright's new movie with uh, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and mm-hmm. Martin Freeman, which is like <laughs> – I love that Martin Freeman's part of it, too. It's called The World's End. And, you know, just the combination of those three guys to me right. is no, it's just like, mm-hmm. I don't even, even need to know what the movie is about uh, uh, to to know that I want to see this. You know? Well, Jerry, you uh, were talking right to me about this movie. last night. Uh, what, what were you saying about it last night, Jerry? Which one? The no, World's I'll End. Talk about, no, 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 the other one I was talking about was the other one. Uh, this is the end with James Franco oh. and all those guys playing themselves, Seth Rogen and Danny McBride, and the end of the world um, in Los Angeles, and they all play mm. themselves, and it looks hysterical. I hope it's hysterical, but I don't know. Well, we've also got we've also got possibly uh, you know it's always possible that these are going to be pushed back, you know, but we've also got the Zero Theorem from Terry Gilliam, mm-hmm. starring Christoph Waltz and uh, and Matt Damon. Now she's so, shooting that. Wow, is, 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 that's that a, is that a is that a go project? Is she shooting that? He's he is shooting that, and it is a go project. So okay, it, you know, but I, I, you know, it's it's difficult to tell with, with some of these. Now uh, this this is going to be one. Here's another one that uh, I'm sure is going to come out this year. Steve McQueen's new movie with uh, Chiwetel. Uh, Eludiar, I can't say his name, uh, in the lead with Paul Giamatti and Brad Pitt, Michael Fassbender, Paul Dano, and Quivin Zala Wallace called 12 Years a Slave. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's about, dumb. Yeah, they've yeah. shot that. Yeah. So so that's going to be something. Also, another, another film this year that I think everybody is looking forward to this. Everybody wants to see this. Alfonso Cuaron's Gravity. With yeah, Clooney. and that, fi- that finally got like an October release date. Didn't yeah, it? no, they wanted to like see that. It's like Clooney and Sandra Bullock, and I've heard, I've been hearing about this thing for a couple of years now, and uh, like because the first time I heard about it was Clooney was talking about it uh, when he was doing Oscar press for The Descendants, mm-hmm. and he said, right. look, he said, look, I've seen some of this, and it, honest to God, it's it's unlike anything you've ever seen, and I, I'm hearing back stuff like it's all like. It's like the opening is like a thirty-minute shot or something, yeah. like an unbro- yeah. unbroken shot. Oh, he's and good they, at that. I mean, they say they say that the the high point. It's an outer space kind of movie with George Clooney and Sandra Bullock. They say that the high point of it is absolutely Sandra Bullock's performance. They say that she kill, kills it in this movie. Wow. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, you know, we also um though. Have um, and speaking of great great directors, Neil um, Blomkamp's film, you know, who did District Nine. Yeah. He has yeah. not. Is it Elysium with Matt Damon? Right. Yeah, and Jodie Foster. Yeah. And, and that. Well, Jodie Foster and, and his and his go-to guy, uh, um, Charto um, Copley, and that's going to be um, fascinating because um, I mean, District Nine was just such a revelation, and this should be fascinating to watch. Um, you also have. Though besides, obviously, you have The Hobbit Part 2, and you have the next Hunger Games movie. You have Ender's Game is finally coming out as a movie this year. Um, Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game, which is a huge, huge book. Um, I didn't read it in um, school, but everyone after me read it, and that's directed by Gavin Hood, and I forget who's playing Ender Wiggum, but that's a big, like, a young adult novel. That's finally hmm. coming to the screen. Oh, we have Attack of the Clones uh, in 3D. Oh boy! Uh, speaking of Star Wars uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah, and Top Gun right. 3D in March, right? Yeah, yeah, and Paranormal yeah, so, Activity 5. Um, see, see that volleyball scene in 3D. Come on, <laughs> Play, playing with the boys in 3D. Good old, good old Kenny Loggins. Let's. Yeah, have you ever seen a more homoerotic film in 3D? It's a be great. Uh, I'm sorry. Did <laughs> I just kill something? Can we all go see together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would that would be great. Uh, and then, uh, and then, of course, in a couple of weeks, Die Hard. The, the fifth oh, that looks Die like Hard. a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. yeah. And Bruce Willis is going to have a, a great, I mean, a big year with, I mean, with that. Maybe the GI Joe sequel. I, I don't know why, why I say that, but maybe that because of the rocks in it and Bruce Willis. But also, 
Red 2 comes out. And, um, oh, I'm very excited about yeah, Red 2. Yeah, that looks two. like a lot of fun. Um, so, because the director for Red 2 is Dean Pariso, who did, uh, who did uh, Galaxy Quest. Yeah, so and I mean, you that's know perfect, that's going to be good, though. I mean, cause, I, I mean, think that's a perfect matchup. <laughs> well, yeah. they, they added Anthony Hopkins into the mix too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think he plays the baddie in it, the bad guy in it. Oh, cool. Not sure, but um, yeah, so that should be, you know, interesting enough. Uh, and also, in terms of like awards, I mean, Dean has been mentioning some that could be up for awards, but uh, Clooney has one at the end of the year that he's directing and starring in. Called the Monuments Men, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. Uh, and what's the plot of that? What does that concern? I know. God, it's... I don't. Well, I basically, don't... you know, in a way, it's kind of a. Re- uh, uh, to me, it sounds like a kind of a remake of a of a John Frankenheimer movie from the mid sixties called The Train, which was about. Uh, uh, it the does race, right. It's the race to save uh, save a bunch of. Uh, classic paintings uh-huh, that uh-huh. are on the way to Berlin on a Nazi-driven train, right. and so uh, and it's quite and a cast. Got, it's, yeah, it's got Matt Damon in it and and Kate Blanchett. So yeah. that's going to be something that's that's quite interesting. I don't quite like the title, but uh, I do. I do. I, I'm very fascinated to see the film. Yeah, just pick uh, a Nazi and something in, in the yeah, title Daniel or, or Fred, in the description and get Bill an Oscar. Murray, John well, Goodman. if you've never seen if you've never seen The Train, oh, that's uh, a great that, film. Oh that, my god, that's that's, a, that's that's a movie that's that that can easily be gotten and and that's a very exciting movie with Burt Lancaster in the lead role and and uh, Paul Schofield as the lead uh, uh, as the lead Nazi in it. So that's. That's a movie that, you know, if you want to see what, you know, the, if you want to do some research on the Monu- Monuments Men, you could easily see the train and get some kind of idea of what's going to happen. Also, we should mention The Butler. We oh, yeah. The Butler with Horace Whitaker and Oprah Winfrey um, and a cast of thousands in it uh, covering – Every twelve years, uh, what is it? Decades, uh, uh, decades in the life of a butler working in the White House. Uh, so you have and, all the uh, stunt casting for who who are playing all the presidents, like Cusack playing Nixon. And I, as I understand it, Cusack's the only one that gets a curse word in the movie. Lee, Lee, Butler, Lee Butler or Lee Daniels, Lee Butler. Lee Daniels just was talking about the butler in a recent interview, and he said, you know, I felt like my hands were tied behind my back because I wasn't able to curse in this movie. I wasn't able to do any weird stuff like have Nicole Kidman pee on anyone. And uh, he, oh, he was like, like so I, I didn't know if that was a minus because it almost sounded like he was not endorsing his own movie. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, mm-hmm. it's Nancy Reagan's played by Jane Fonda, which is like <laughs> – that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Alan Rickman playing uh, playing Ronald Reagan. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the casting in that movie is strange. Uh, you know, but you know, it's 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 something that has to be seen. And also, we've also got uh, Jurassic Park 3D. It's mm-hmm. coming out in 3D. That uh, might actually oh, yeah. benefit from 3D. I think. You know, I think that could actually be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, yeah. I just ruined the show. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, but we have a big. Well, we have big sequels coming out though. Star right. Trek, um, and I, yep. and I mentioned, but we have Star Trek. We have other big movies like we have the reboots like The Man of Steel and then World War Z. Iron Man. Iron Man, but nothing. I think Jamie, you'll agree with this. Anchorman is the big sequel, more so than The Hangover. I cannot 3. wait. I, I mean, cannot Anchorman. wait. Anchorman. And that's a Christmas release. That's on the schedule for like Christmas Day or something. It says December like, 20th. Oh. You know where I'll be December 20th, guys. That's that's where I'll be. Sorry. That's, I can't that's... wait. I just watched that. I just watched that original movie again the other night. And I laughed so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this movie just genuinely funny to me. Uh, but yeah, and Man of Steel is like a big uh, question mark. I mean, oh, a huge I, question mark. I mean, yeah, but I, I know, I'm sure that movie will do great business, but. And I hope they do it well. I'm not sold on Zack Snyder necessarily, but maybe this will be the one that'll turn me, you know, to him. But. We also have two White House uh, movies: White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen, about where they take over the White House. I guess is the uh, storyline. I know White. Uh, I know White House Down is what. That's Jamie Foxx, right? I think I'm not positive. Let me check. He's, here. he's playing the president. I think. 
Yeah. Tatum, Tatum, J- Jamie Foxx, Jason Clark, Maggie Gyllenhaal, James Woods. Oh my God! It's just like everyone is everyone is in this movie. Um, that's an Emmerich movie, isn't it? That's yeah, Roland Emmerich. Oh my God! The White House will be destroyed probably again. The storyline concerns a paramilitary takeover of the White House. God, he really does hate the president. Um, I just I don't know. The second I heard that plot line, I got like the feeling of Air Force One, and then I thought, <laughs> then I thought, you know, well, both or even, them. All right, even lower on the. Fallen. Even lower on the ladder, something like the Shadow Conspiracy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But here you have a business like fallen with Gerard Butler, which is directed by Ant- Antoine uh, Fuqua. And, you know, this is another one where the White House is taken over by terrorists. So it's like the year of the two volcano movies. The two, you know, I mean, the two asteroid yeah. movies. We have two White House movies. The father and son switching body movies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got mm-hmm. we got that with White mm-hmm. the White House this year. Uh-huh. Let me mention two more two more sequels. Well, one is a prequel, uh, Monsters University, uh, the big the big entry this year from mm-hmm. Pixar, which uh, is a prequel to one of my very favorite, like right next to Toy Story, one of my very favorite of their uh, of their films, Monsters Inc. And so you know, I just love those two those two lead characters and uh, and. You know, I just I just can't wait for that. But also, I want to I want to point to, and I I hope this is still happening. I don't know that it's, it's it is, but I'm really hoping for a Bad Santa Part Two uh, oh, this year because because uh, I do want to see what happens to those characters. Oh yeah, character. definitely. You know, so uh, I mean, I, I hope that happens. Uh, can I well, when you watch that like, original movie now, uh, yep. you know, you think you know. Bernie Mac and John Ritter are no longer with us. Right? Yeah, yeah. And well, then what a funny movie. To move on. It will be easy to move on because if you don't have the if you don't have the mall as the central place, then then it makes it, it can make no, sense. No, I mean all, all you all you really need is Billy Bob Thornton and the midget. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tony Cox. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so here's some uh, big directors that have movies coming out. They're definitely coming out this year. Uh, 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 Lars von Trier has his new movie *Nymphomaniac* coming out with Charlotte Gainsbourg and Stellan Skarsgård. Group group um, screening, is, group screening for that one. Um. <laughs> this is supposedly this. I think it's supposedly his movie where he he shows it all. You know, he shows like real life sex going on. So uh, so this is something he's been wanting to make for a little while, and you know, it's going to make a big splash when it lands. Also, Maps to the Stars by uh, David Cronenberg. Always, always. Oh, okay, uh, cool. Always excited to see new Cronenberg. And then one of the things that I'm most looking forward to is a movie. I don't like it that it uses a title that I already know, which is called Night Moves. Uh, but uh, it's by Kelly Reichardt, one of my favorite directors, who did uh, Old Joy and Wendy and Lucy and uh, and. Uh, Oh, what was that Western thing that she did uh, last a couple of years ago? Anyway, oh, meat uh, cut off. This, yeah, yeah. meat cut off. Uh, this this is about uh, uh, environmental activists planning to blow up a dam, and it's with Dakota Fanning, Jesse Eisenberg, and uh, and uh, Peter Sarsgaard. And um, you know, I'm always looking forward to anything that that she does. Also, one more uh, one more in this group is Oliver Hirschbiegel. Uh, his new movie, uh, if you remember, he did uh, Downfall. Right. Uh, so story what's his of, new movie? You know, what's his new movie? His new movie is Diana, about the last days of the Princess Diana with no, Naomi Watts in the lead. All right. Oh my right. God! They'll make they'll make a movie. They'll make this a YouTube video too that they'll parody. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, but yes, but, yes, but what yes. but what uh I'm wondering how brave it, it's going to be because I don't actually, know. for the for the longest time like years ago when we first interviewed John Badham, he was talking about he was working on a script of the conspiracy around Diana's death. Mm-hmm. Um and so I'm wondering if this wa- if this is an offshoot of that project. That's a good question. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that, you know, but because they they made a documentary they they made a documentary on it apparently, and and the royal family squashed it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's never seen the light of day. Mm. So I don't know I don't know how controversial this movie will be and if they're prepared for a fight. 
Mm. And there's there's also two movies about Julian Assange, the uh, the um, the founder of WikiLeaks. Uh, there's a narr- narrative movie uh, with uh, that's directed by Bill Condon with Benedict Cumberbatch in, mm-hmm. in the lead. He's per- he looks perfect for it for some reason. I think he looks perfect. He, he does. And then there's a documentary I think by Alex Gibney called We Tell Secrets uh, that's mm-hmm. coming out. So, so we've got two Julian Assange movies coming out uh, this year. Also, inter- interesting things from directors like uh, Phil Alder Robinson, who's doing The Angriest Man in Brooklyn with uh, Mila Kunis uh, and Peter Dinklage and Robin Williams. Um, and then there's uh, J.C. Chandor, you know, who just got who was nominated for an Oscar last year for Margin Call for writing the screenplay. His directorial debut, uh, well, his next directorial effort is coming out. Called All Is Lost, uh, starring Robert Redford, and then you've also got Errol Morris doing his first uh, narrative film in a really long time, called Freezing People Is Easy, starring Paul Rudd as a man investigating being frozen after he dies, and mm. and this this is set in the mid sixties. So, mm. so, speaking of that, though. You have two. You actually have two interest other movies that I think that will come out next year on the Re- Reluctant Fundamentalist by yeah, the pioneer cool. who did um, Salem Bombay and the Namesake. But you also then have I think, and I thought this would come out last year, but it's not. Um, Deepa Mehta's um, adaptation of Salman Rusty's Midnight's Children, which is supposed to be awesome from what I hear. So um, I would love to see that. Um, well, there's yeah. a, uh, there's the filmmaker that. Uh, we had on the show, and it's the one filmmaker that Roger Ebert champions more than any other among the new blood, I mean, outside of Werner Herzog, uh, is uh, Ramin Barani. Uh, and he's got, uh, he did Goodbye Solo was his last movie. Yeah, that was uh, a good, that was, oh, I love that movie. And he did, like, Man Push Cart. Uh, uh-huh. but he's, he's got a new movie called At Any Price with Dennis Quaid, and, they, and I've heard that it's like a career-making performance for Dennis Quaid. And I remember the last time they said a career-making performance from Dennis Quaid. It was that movie Soldier or something. Oh, Soul Savior. Sniper, Soldier, Savior. Savior. Yeah. I mean, it was something yeah. like that. Uh, and Zac Efron's in it, too. But uh, they, they say it's a very, very good movie. That's April 26th, the same day that Michael Bay's quote-unquote lower-budgeted art film comes out, Pain and Gain, with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg. And his, Tony uh, Shalhoub. Yeah, because right. he's... When you think like uh, Beefcake uh, with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg, you think Tony Shalhoub. Like, let's throw some Tony Shalhoub in. <laughs> let's it's let's so Tony true. Shalhoub. That's like before they go out and work out, I'm sure they say, okay, guys, let's Tony Shalhoub up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. A lot of people will be looking forward to Nicholas uh, Winding Refn's uh, Only Only God Forgives, uh-huh. uh, yeah. which will be his follow-up with Ryan Gosling to Drive. Oh, uh, speaking so, of Ryan, the, the Place Beyond the Pines with Ryan oh, Gosling right. and, and Bradley Cooper should be coming soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, that and looks good. Have, then we have the reuniting of uh, Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper in, uh, in Serena. Uh, in uh, the early part of the year, too. Okay, so good. Be... I'll be busy. I'm going to need to rob a bank to see all these movies, but okay. <laughs> Kick Ass 2, uh, the, the Return of Jim Carrey and Kick Ass 2. That, that, now, Kick Ass 2, is, it's interesting because Kick Ass did not like, this, did not like the uh, box office on fire. Um, right. So this is very interesting. But I, 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 the second time I saw Kick Ass, I liked it a lot more, so I have high hopes for it. The Lone Ranger, do you think – and that has, like, The Lone Ranger and Despicable Me too, which actually, for the first time, I'll be going to see an animated movie at the movie theater because Al Pacino does the voice of the villain in Despicable oh, Me too. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And I, I, all this, all these years I've been thinking, why don't they get Pacino to do an animated movie? It's like he's got the perfect voice for it. So I'm like, okay, I'll go see Despicable Me too. But it comes out the same day as Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger – a terribly expensive movie. I mean, this movie is massive. Like, yeah, did you ever like see a, the other big budget movie they made in 1980? 
Oh, oh no, yeah, but it, the legend of the Long Ranger. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, saw I have that. a feeling, and then Johnny Depp is playing Tonto. I mean, it could work, I, but they've made it so like, oh, they've made it like so. They're trying to make it so hip and cool and everything. You know what I see when I see that movie, Lone Ranger, like the trailer. I see Wild Wild West, and especially totally. since it since it comes out the Fourth of July weekend, just like that one did. I think that we're going to have a Wild Wild West sized bomb. Oh, I think actually. so. I, I don't I, think I spell that too, and I think it's very bizarre, by the way, that Johnny Depp actually plays. Tonto, who's not supposed to be the star, he's supposed to be supporting. So I know like, it's, why, it's a weird. That that's already bizarre to me. It's uh, a, it, it I you know not everything needs to be rebooted or re. The Lone Ranger was not I you know if you came to me if I was a producer or a studio chief said hey let's make a new version of Lone Ranger, I'd be like you know. Hear some crack, go smoke it, come back to me when you're done. Uh, <laughs> you know what, though? And, I mean, call me crazy, but I think that at the end of the summer, we'll see a, we'll see movies like uh, the, uh, uh, the the Iron Man 3 and Man of Steel taking the box office reins for the biggest movies of the summer. But I think, like, right up there with them will be the Smurfs 2. I mean, because that first Smurfs movie made a Bungalow. Oh yeah, no, it did. You're right. I mean, so Smurfs Two will be one of the biggest hits of the year, believe it or not. I mean, it really that, will be. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. Kids gotta, kids gotta go to the movie too, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, but you know, I think that uh, you know, I sense that the show is coming to a close. We haven't mentioned one of the biggest movies that's going to come out this year which will come out at the end of the year, and I'm sure it will be up for Oscars next year, and that is The Wolf of Wall Street, the new... Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah, that will definitely... Um... You know, what well, do you say at, about that? Looking at the lineup, uh, it's been a long shoot, actually, The Wolf of Wall Street, but it's got a really interesting cast, because it's DiCaprio, it's uh, Jonah Hill, it's Jean Duchardin, uh, it's uh, Matthew McConaughey, in a Martin Scorsese movie, uh, it was photographed by Rodrigo Prieto because he doesn't have his usual Robert Richardson because Richardson right. was stuck stuck in reshoots for Django. Uh, so it's a new cinematographer for him, and it's uh, I'm sure it's going to be like a one off with him, uh, you know. And it's the one that DiCaprio's so exhausted with now that he wants to quit acting for a while. Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, I told Jerry about this last night. There's a there's one of those Photoshop deals online, like a, a picture of DiCaprio up top, and it says, I've made two movies, uh, three movies in two years. I'm exhausted. I'm quitting acting for a while. And then right below it, there's a picture of Nicolas Cage saying, that's just adorable. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, we the new Sin the City. Too. Do you remember uh, the, uh, the new uh, animated film with Nicolas Cage as the lead? Uh, the lead voice in it called the crew. Well, I'm sure he uh, has like four or five, four or five movies out this year. Nicholas I mean, Cage. I mean, he probably has like 20 movies because he's got he's got to pay off that taxes and everything. So I mean, uh, the new Sin City guy. is out in October. Uh, Carrie, they pushed that from next month to October, so it'll be cl- closer to Halloween, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, I hope that doesn't mean the movie's not any good. Uh, I think it's smart to move that to Halloween, though. I mean, that's a good, that's a very good. Um, I think that's a good move, um, especially since they seem to think it's a good movie. So, the new Ridley Scott movie, the one that it's uh, like a Mike, Michael Fassbender and Brad Pitt, and it's got a great, great cast. It's a Cormac McCarthy. I think it's his only original screenplay. McCarthy. Oh, the uh, counselor. The counselor, yeah, the counselor. that comes out yeah. in oh, November. Yeah. November 15th is when that comes out. And if you remember, he had to leave the shooting of that movie to attend his brother's funeral. Right, right. Uh, so that postponed it for a little bit. Uh, but that looks like a big high-profile Oscar contender, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then the, what is uh, what is Matthew McConaughey's movie where he plays the AIDS patient? That's going to be something that's, that's going to... The Dallas going... Buyers Club, yes. Yeah. So I think that's that's going to be something that's going to. And by the way, I, I need to say this too. I, I'm I'm sort of really looking forward to movie 43 <laughs> because I'm just so 
fascinated by this film. I can't wait to hear what you say about it. I saw it. it. It's funny. I don't care what Richard Roper says. I I couldn't stop laughing because I couldn't believe it. So they could they they actually went ahead with this. It's so fucking ridiculous. I mean, I mean, is there is there a story to this movie? Because I cannot figure it out. Through I, I think the. The trailer has just like completely. They wanted to make. Uh, I think they just wanted to make a, a Kentucky Fried movie for our time. Um, uh, it, it, some of the things I think are very funny. Some of the things I think are just incredibly stupid. Um, but it, it's it's very hit and miss. I don't think it's as bad as uh, Richard Roper has made it out to be, or anybody else. But it has its moments, and then it has other moments that are really cringe-inducing. You're just like, oh my god, how did they get these people to do this? Okay. Uh, well, December. You know, December be a John Turtle Tob has a new movie called Last Vegas, and it, it's like, I guess it's like another old geezer movie living their youth. It's a Las Vegas movie with Michael Douglas and De Niro and two other older actors. Uh, Morgan it Freeman. It appeal to me because I'm an old geezer now, so I guess Morgan that's why Fre- I like it. Morgan movies. Freeman and then somebody else. I can't remember the fourth cast member uh, and then Saving Mr. Banks the movie where Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney uh, opens up oh, December right. 20th oh wow yeah. okay and then there's so that, you know that movie that'll 40, be a big player 47 and actually Paul Giamatti's in Saving Mr. Banks um, th- there's a movie 47 Ronin that's had so much problems but that finally comes out Christmas Day it's the with Keanu, Keanu Reeves Sam- right the Samurai movie yeah uh, and that's the same day that we see Jack Ryan, the new Jack Ryan movie with Chris Pine and Kevin Costner. Okay, mm-hmm. it, it could be these could be these some of these sound very, they could be promising. So who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be some sleepers in there that we don't know about yet that'll crop up. Yeah, no, I hope I hope so. Uh, and yeah. we didn't mention Oz, the great and powerful Can Sam I Raimi. Can I say something? I don't. I I like the Wizard of Oz, but I'm not. I, he says I get older. I just really don't. I don't care, <laughs> kind of almost about it. Mm. I understand that. I no, understand I mean that. don't get me wrong. I understand its importance, and I saw it so much growing up. But I don't now. They want to so they want to make this one like I guess it is got an interesting cast and everything. It's obviously this is the first. This is I guess based on the first book. In mm. the and. But I, I just part of me is just doesn't really care. I hate to say that, but it's just. Eh. How do we feel about World War Z? By the way, um, it's. I think world, if World War Z had come out when the book, or shortly if World War Z came out before The Walking Dead, it would have had a greater shot. I think that people are just might be so burned Zombie out on out. zombies. Uh huh. I don't. It seems like it seems like it, how says it be well behind the curve. Mm-hmm. And even though it's a great book, and it's by Max Brooks, um, who wrote the Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z, he wrote, and he was well ahead of the curve. I think this is a case where it doesn't. It's just been the zombie thing has been done so much to no no pun intended to death. Um, it might be just. I'm know. looking forward to it actually. <laughs> I want to see it. Don't get me wrong, but um, I, I mean I'm curious to see how it plays out. But I mean I just think it might. I mean because be, we have we haven't really had. Yeah, well, yeah, we've had a lot of zombie stuff, but not that I can remember any kind of epic zombie movie. And this, no this big like screen a, stuff. No big yeah. screen. Yeah, like I mean, a, Romero big consistently shoots himself in the foot with every new zombie movie he does. So I mean, yeah. But, but talk about a tr- problematic production. I mean, World War Z has had some problems. Yeah. Uh, and and where the studio, but the studio believed in it enough to to budget out reshoots for a whole new ending. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's that's a sign of encouragement, you know, as much as potential discouragement. 